where I left off in the last video, we were saying, well, I have two dice, like you know, let's say we're playing Monopoly, two six-sided dice, and I want to say, what's the probability that I get a seven? So um, when the when I add up the the two rolls on the dice, what's the probability I get seven? So I drew this grid here, and this grid essentially represents all of the outcomes I could get with the two dice. Where on the top row, that's the the outcomes on dice one. I could get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. And similarly for dice two, these are all the outcomes I could get. So each of these squares represent a particular outcome of both dice. For example, this square means that I got a six on dice one and a six on dice two, right? And of course, what does that mean that they added up to? They added up to twelve. Right? And we could go through all of them. Essentially we could take the sum of dice one, dice two, and we could say, well what do they add up to? Well this is two this is three, four, five, six, seven, and then this will be three. It'll go up. Let's see. This will be three. Then this will be four, five, six, seven, eight. This will be. Let's do all of them. Four. It just keeps going up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. This will four plus one. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, and I think you, you see a little interesting pattern here, right? This is, will be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And this is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I said, what's the probability of getting a 7? Well, that's all the squares that have a, a 7 in them. So let's see, that is, let me see if I can use this, this fill tool. That could, this could be interesting. So we're all the 7s. This one, this one. This one, this one, this one, and that one. So what's the probability that I guess that it actually turned out pretty neat how that worked. Uh, what's the probability of getting seven? Well, as we from our, our one of the original definitions of probability, we said, well, what are the total number of equally let me let me do it over here. Probability of seven. What's the total number of equally probable outcomes? Well we have thirty six outcomes and they're all equally probable, right? There's thirty six total outcomes. And so what's the problem we get seven? What, uh, how many of these 36 outcomes are, result in the dice adding up to seven? And well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six. So the probability of getting a seven is equal to six over 36 is equal to one sixth. And so we could you know, use this grid is useful for figuring out the probability of getting any number. We could say, and we can even just, just by looking at this, we see that the most likely of all of the numbers we get is seven, right? And and if you just look at the pattern, because it covers this whole diagonal in terms of, uh, and then you know the probability of getting a six is equal to the probability of getting an eight. You know the probability of getting a nine is equal to the probability of getting a, of the nine is equal to a probability of getting a five, and so forth and so on. Actually, let's let's do that. Let's say so seven is the most probable, and just to get some intuition on on dice rolls, let's say what what's the 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 second light. So what's our probability of giving eight? So eight, 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 eight. And so how many eights are there out of a uh, out of the total number? Let's see. So the probability of getting an eight is equal to one, two, three, four, five is equal to five over thirty six. And that's also equal to the probability of getting a six, right? One, two, three, four, five, sixes probability of getting a 6. So let me color the 6s as the same the same green just so we know that that's a uh, so that's a 6 6 So those are all the 6s. And you know this actually wouldn't hurt to memorize because when you play Monopoly you'll know your odds of, you know, landing on boardwalk for example and then you would have to uh uh you you would you would, you know, know what your well actually I'll probably do another video on what expected value and expected cost and things like that, because that's probability plus a little bit of uh, money and it'll be very useful when you're playing Monopoly. And so we could keep doing what's the probability of a five? Well it's one, two, three, four. There's four out of the thirty six outcomes are a five. So the probability of a five is the four out of thirty six, and that is equal to one over nine. And that's also the same as the probability of getting a nine. Probability of nine is equal to one over nine. So that's interesting. I mean, you know, if you ever play craps or you play Monopoly, you now have a sense of what the different probabilities are of the different roles. And you know, that's why I think in a lot of games, you know, seven is a very important role because that is actually the most probable of uh, of number. For example, the the probability of getting a seven is higher than the probability of getting a nine or 
a five, a five right? Because what's the probability of getting? What's the probability of of a five? And we'll say or a nine. That u is a or, right? Well, that's the probability of getting a five, plus the probability of getting a nine, which is equal to one ninth plus one ninth, one ninth plus one ninth, which is equal to two ninths. Oh, actually, I was wrong. You see, that that's why it's good to do the calculation. One sixth is less than two ninths. So no, this is a higher one. But I can say, so I was wrong about that, but we can say that the probability of the probability of getting a, let's say a a two or an eleven, two or an eleven is less than the probability of getting a seven. And let's calculate that. What's the probability of getting a two? A a a two Actually, I should have said a 3 or 11. I wanted it to be symmetric. Well, let's just go with what I wrote. Probability of 2. There's only one situation where I get a 2, right? So this is 1 over 36. 1 out of the 36 results in a 2. And then the 11, that's 2 out of 36, right? So 2 out of 36 is 1 over 8. Let me write it as 2. 2 out of 36. And so that equals 3 over 36. And so that equals 1 over 12. So the probability of getting a 2, which is just this one, or an 11, is one out of twelve, while the probability of getting a so the probability of getting a seven is actually twice that of getting a two or an eleven. So that's just interesting. I know, you know, sometimes I don't know where these are going, but I think it's interesting to analyze dice because dice show up a lot. And another way, although this grid is probably the clearest way of doing it, another way if, that I do it, if I don't have a grid in front of me, if I say, well, you know, what's the probability of getting a I don't know, let's say, what's the probability of getting a five? Well, it's the probability of, let's say this is dice 1. And this is essentially the same thing as a grid, but it's good to have a multiple frameworks of, of this. So how can I get a 5? Well, if I get a 1 on dice 1, I get a 2, I get a, I get a, yeah, I get a 4 on dice 2. If I get a 2, then I need a 3. If I get a 3, then I need a 2. If I have a 4, then I need a 1. And then if I have a, and then if I have a 5, no. And that, th- those are the only situations, right? So we could say, well, what's the probability of getting? So this, we need each of these probabilities, and then the next one has to be these. So there's four probabilities that kind of keep us in the game in dice one. So what's the probability of getting a one? Well, that's one sixth. So this is dice one. This is, you get a two. This is a three. This is, you get a four. Right? And so what's the probability of getting a one on dice one? It's one over six, right? And they're all 1 over 6. That's probably you get a 2. That's probably you get a 3. That's probably you get a 4. right? And so given that you got a 1 on dice 1, what's the probability you get a 4 then? So then you know, there's 6 prob- you know, this, this tree, and there's, you, know, you get a 5 or a 6, but those don't count because we'd be out of the game. So in dice 1, then on dice 2, there's a 1 out of 6 chance that I get a 4. And then there's you know, a bunch of other chances for all the other numbers. But this is the only situation in which we get a 5. right? And similarly, on dice, this is dice two, this column. And then if I get a two, what do I need on dice two? I need a three. Well, to get exactly a three, there's a one six chance again. And of course, they sum up to five. If I have a three here, then there's a one six chance that I get a two, which is exactly what I need. And of course, there's a lot of other things we can get, but we're selecting for the fives. And if I had a four, I'm going to switch colors, there's a one six chance that I get a one to get a five. Right? So what are all the probabilities of this? Well, this is 1 6 times 1. Six. So the probability of this, of getting a 1 and then a 4, let me clean this up. I think I'm running out of time. Actually, let me do it on this side. So the probability of this event, these are messier than normal, of this one, of getting a 1 and then getting a 4. Well, that's 1 out of 36. Right? 1 sixth. This is 1 sixth times 1 sixth. This is 1 sixth. And then after that happens, you have to get another 1 sixth. So that's 1 out of 36. And by a similar logic, this is 1 out of 36. This is 1 out of 36. And this is 1 out of 36. Each of these is 1 out of 36. And if you think about that grid we drew, each of these outcomes represent a square on that grid, getting a 2 and then a 3, getting a 1 and then getting a 4. And then our total probability of getting 5 is the sum of all of these, 4 out of 36, which is equal to 1 over 9. So I just wanted to show you, you don't have to draw a grid. You could do a tree. You could do a little table like this and say, well, what are the ways I can get 5, and what's the probability of each of these, and then sum them up. And they all work. 
and and in different times different um different methods will be more useful i will see you in the next video